This is Not Your Standard Breakfast Show with Andy Curtis. It's Not Your Standard Breakfast Show. We're live at Prasa at the Standard who are here. And our guest today, uh, well, you, you can you can kind of see one of them. He's in the background. Just say hello, Will. Yeah, man. Oh, there you go. That's Will Robinson, music producer and uh, the man behind the ESAN project. And he's brought us two guests today, uh, Eric Hargrove and his wife, Lily Anna Hargrove. Good morning to you both. Good, good morning. morning. My goodness me the bass tone on your voice Eric do you sing as well do you sing or, or? Uh, I try I'm, I'm still trying but my, okay. my wife doesn't want me to but she won't teach me Lily's shaking her head she's going no 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 she no, won't no. teach me I'm trying I'm learning on my own no. well it's, it's lovely to meet you both um, I've had a look at your uh, your website uh, Eric and uh, some of the people that you played with are just unbelievable you're you're probably best known as having been a drummer with James Brown yes uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. How did that happen? How long have you been drumming? Oh, I've been drumming since I was nine years old. Okay. Um, so a just in the school of years bands, then. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the school bands, marching band, you know, the concert band. So right. I, I had a, a well-rounded musical uh, upbringing. Right. Um, I went into the U.S. Army after high school. Um, and played in the in the army bands um, in Germany and uh, in the states. And then um, after a while, I got out of the military and I joined James Brown. Yeah. Did you learn how to how to read music? Because obviously, drumming. You know, a lot of people play drums by ear, but there is actually a method of reading the notes. Someone can give you a sheet and say, "There you go," and you can work out how to play. Do you, exactly. Do you read? Do you yes. Read? Yeah, most every instrument has reading that you can do with it. Right. Um, and drums and percussion included. Um, note values are the same for every instrument. So what kind? Of, what year are we talking about that you joined the James Brown band? Obviously, uh, that must, would be 1998, be January okay. of 1998. Okay, and you had to presumably you had to learn all of his old songs from the 60s and 70s. Yeah, I thought I did too, but it wasn't really the case because those songs, the way they were done, he was not doing them those ways. He had his own versions. Okay. Um, of those songs, which would sometimes change. So trying to learn his show was, you had to be there. You right. could not listen. There was no recording you could listen to. You could get the gist of it. And we were chatting before we turned on the microphones about, uh, and Will actually mentioned that, that James Brown used to shout out things in the middle of a song to change key or perhaps even change song or for solos and so on. That must have been fun. <laughs> it was. It, it kept you on your toes. You always had to be watching him. Right. And the, the funny thing about him was he almost had this ESP. So he knew if someone wasn't watching him. And he would turn... That's not good. You know, yeah. <laughs> so if he knew someone wasn't watching him, he might do something different with the song. And if you missed it, he got you. Uh, you're in big trouble. Yes. And, and Liliana, very briefly, before we have to take a break in a moment, but very briefly, how long have you been singing? Professionally, I started in 1997. Okay. When I joined the uh, Singapore Armed Forces uh, Music and you're Drama. From, you're from Singapore. I am from Singapore. That's right. right. And so. so, so you've been singing since 1997 professionally. Professionally. And yes. before that, presumably, when you were a little girl. Yes, I started um, singing. Uh, with my uncle's band when I was five. Wow. Yeah. Eric, we were talking before about how you uh, worked for uh, James Brown for a while. Yes. Uh, Will has just suggested that we ask you about your audition for the James Brown band. Go. Um, I was asked to join the band at one of their gigs. Um, I was supposed to go down and during a sound check audition with another drummer. Um, that must have been then, intimidating in itself, uh, having another drummer there too. Yeah. Well, James Brown always had at least two drummers. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I was supposed to go down and audition from what I was told. There would be another drummer who would, was going to audition as well. And we would either, you know, stay and just watch the show or we were supposed to come back to Augusta um, and watch the show or, or, or uh, do another audition. Um, but I get there. And it's just me and the other drummer who normally plays. 
Um, and he says, you know, set up this drum set and we'll both play and we'll see how you go. Vibe off each other yeah, as well, yeah. presumably. So we did that and the drummer, his name is uh, Robert Thompson, nicknamed Mousy. Yeah? <laughs> so Mousy says, well, you'll do great on the gig tonight. And I said, what? He's like, yeah, you're playing the gig tonight. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be an audition, right? I'm here to audition. That's it. He said, no, you're playing the show. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's, he's having a laugh. you know. Sure enough, the rest of the band comes in. Mr. Brown comes in. And he turns, he looks at me. He says, come here, son. I said, how you doing, Mr. Brown? He says, son, I heard a lot about you. <laughs> Let's see what you can do. So he had the band play, not a song, but one of the segues um, that I'd never heard before. Uh, he had Mousy play it. He said, okay, son, now you do it. And I played it, and I didn't play it perfect. And he said, son, welcome aboard. Wow. Simple as that. That was it. That was January 2nd of 1998. You obviously remember it very, very well. <laughs> so that night I'm thinking, okay, I don't know the repertoire. I mean, I know some of the songs, but I don't know how he does them for these shows. So I'm asking Miles, he was like, how's this going to work? He said, I'm going to play. He said, and when he wants you to play, he'll point at you. You know, you just take over the groove. So I get on the gig and it's lights and dancers and singers and everyone's doing their thing and I'm like looking around, I'm like, <laughs> wow, what is this? So he had pointed to me like maybe once or twice and I missed it. <laughs> I missed it because there was so much going on. There was so much action going on. Um, Certainly a case of being at the deep end then, obviously. Yes. Wow. And, you know, I finally caught on that he was pointing at me because it wasn't an obvious point because he's facing the audience and it's kind of he's kind of pointing behind himself right it's not obvious well and you mentioned earlier on before we started talking that that you really had to keep your eye on him for just the minutest movements saying okay you're up every single second Wow. Our guests today are drummer Eric Hargrove and his wife, who's a singer, Lily Anna Hargrove. And we're going to talk to her now because, you know, we've given the microphone to Eric far too much. And, and now it's your turn, Lily Anna. You have been singing, you mentioned, uh, since, professionally since 1997. What's your kind of, uh, what, what kind of songs do you sing? Or you sing everything? I, I sing, I'd like to think I sing everything. Um, there were a couple of times where I've been thrown to do genres that I'm not familiar with. Such like, as? Uh, Latin music. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, I was given 20 songs to learn in two months and I speak no habla español. Okay. You know, and um, uh, that was, that was a, a fun, definitely rewarding as well. And I'm definitely in love with uh, Latin culture and music okay. in general. Talking of love, how did you meet this young young man? He found me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course I did. That's a giveaway. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> he found me. Um, well, we met in Singapore. Okay. And Because uh, you're, you're both based in Singapore now, yes? Yes. yes. Okay. So he was working in Singapore with, uh, with uh, uh, the Resorts World and um, we had some mutual friends because he'd go out and sit in with, with bands, uh, m my friends, and uh, he asked for my number. Okay, as one does. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the rest is history. And the rest is that about tw 12 years uh, wow. of uh, together, of being together, and 10 years of marriage. This year is our 10th year anniversary. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And two kids. Wow. And where are they? They're not here on holiday with mum and dad. No, they are not. <laughs> This trip is about us. Ten well, it's, year. it's very, very kind of you guys to, to spend your time. I know you're on holiday, uh, and very, very kind of you to come and join us so early in the okay. morning. Pleasure is ours. 
at this time of the morning, most singers would usually be saying, I can't sing, I can't sing, I need 20 cups of coffee and I need to rest my vocal cords. But you're going to do a little song for us, aren't you? I can do a little something. Okay, yeah. go ahead, all yours. Okay, so this is uh, one of my favourite classics from the Bee Gees. Um, sing along if you know this one. Okay. That's a light, a certain kind of light that never shone on me and I want my life to be lived with you lived with you that's the way everybody says to do each and every little thing Ooh, but what good does it bring if I ain't got you if I ain't got you baby you don't know what it's like baby you don't know To love somebody, to love somebody the way I love you. Yeah. Fantastic, Michael. Thank you. Lovely tone you have and fantastic diction as well. That's really, I'm, I've got headphones on. Nobody else has got headphones on. That blew me away. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Andy. Well, listen, let's talk to you guys some more. We've got to go and do the news uh, in a moment. Uh, it's lovely to have you here. Eric Hargrove and Liliana Hargrove are our guests today, uh, brought in by Will Robinson, who's uh, the man responsible for the ESAN project, amongst many, many other things. Football as well, for some odd reason, but we may get to that before the end of the program. Uh, the news is next after this. Eric, we were talking before uh, about various other people you've played with. I mean, you're, you're known as a, a, a former drummer for James Brown, but you've played with so many other bands and artists as well. We were discussing uh, Brand New Heavy's lead singer. You've also worked with um, Luther Vandross's uh, band leader, I believe. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit about how how do you get these opportunities? I mean, just re by reputation. Yeah, you just follow my lap, you know. It's just <laughs> luck. <laughs> Life has a habit of drop, dropping things in your lap, but they all seem to have been fairly good opportunities. Yes, I, I've been very fortunate um, throughout my life. Blessed, um, blessed, and and more than anything, blessed with my wife and oh. my two kids. Oh, <laughs> darling. Um, but yeah, I should turn the mics yeah. off now. You can have a little kiss. <laughs> talk again later on. Tell me about some of the other people that you played with, other than the James um, Brown band. Well, um, there are some promoters and some people in in Singapore that have brought in um, some great musicians, and Nat Adderley Jr. Right, um, who is the nephew of Nat Adderley, um, famous jazz musician. Well, actually, his dad and his uncle both played in, in uh, a lot of great jazz bands and you know on their own do you do you specialize now in kind of playing more jazz styles or I, I try to anything? do everything I right. really do I try to do everything and and um, I've been asked to do a lot of different things so I've had to <laughs> do the best I can lots of googling um, but yeah Nat Early Jr. was the music director for Luther Vandross right um, for many years um, and they wrote some song songs together and stuff so being based in Singapore does that mean that when the, the promoters come in and they're, they're bringing perhaps individual artists singers perhaps they, they have to put together a band in Singapore are you the, Only are you the go to guy no I wish I was that that would be absolutely wonderful um, but no I've just had the opportunity to to be in the right place at the right time for for some of those things sure um, but most everybody you know sing Singapore has enough money where they can bring in everybody's <laughs> you know uh, their whole band is is Formula One Grand Prix time the opportunity to to put your hands out and catch the work as it falls from the ceiling yes I will be playing with a corporate band um, okay. for F1 right um, the countdown band Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a New Year's Eve yeah. band. <laughs> um, sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, we uh, play a variety of music. 
um, but it's just it's just party. And, and do you time. do you play? I mean, I, I spoke to Liliana. In fact, we'll ask ask you. You you, you sing on a regular basis as well in Singapore? I, I yes, I do. I, I sing two nights uh, a week on Friday and Saturday, two different venues. Right. And one of the venues is a uh, a cigar and whiskey bar uh, that I've been playing uh, for twenty years. Wow. Now and. Um, it's a it's a very um, intimate um, setup where it's acoustic, a three piece band, and you know people would come in, have their smokes and and their whiskey, and just. Do you allow your husband to play with the band, or, or is it completely separate? Um, you have yeah. separate musical careers. You know, we <coughs> we did. I enjoyed one particular um, gig that we did together, and it was opening. Um, we were the opening band for uh, Earth, Wind and Fire Experience. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And that was Al McKay's group. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, we brought in uh, some funk uh, classics and um, I get to sing uh, with the whole band and, uh, you know, with him directing it, it's it's really awesome. It's, sure. It's, 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 it's great. Sounds great. I mean, just just the words, earth, wind and fire, got me excited <laughs> for, for sure. Uh, let's talk some more in a moment. Our guests today are Eric and Liliana Hargrove, and uh, we'll be back with more conversation in a moment. Let's take a little break and back soon. It's not your standard breakfast show from Surf Radio. I'm Andy Curtis. We are live at Prasa at the Standard Hua Hin. The two of you are based in Singapore. Uh, you're still working on a regular basis, obviously bringing up two kids. Uh, your holiday here, is there any opportunity perhaps to, to do some work in Thailand or are you very much based in Singapore and only Singapore? Well, that depends on the conductor here, Mr. <laughs> Will Robinson. I've, I've named him the conductor because he makes everything happen and yeah. all eyes are on him. Yeah. He, it's, it's like everything he touches, it's like he's in front of an orchestra and, and he's conducting and everyone's paying attention. Well, we were just chatting parts. before we turned the microphones on about the uh, Copa Thailand, it's the Copa Thailand, yeah? there's a football yeah, tournament uh, which is coming to Hua Hin, which Will is, is behind. And then, you know, the, the conversation goes from one thing to another, to another, to another, to another. So presumably, I mean, you've, you've known Will for a, for a while, obviously. Yes, actually, 2002, was it? 2001, 2002? 2001 with James Brown. No, yes. 2004, was it? Manchester. Yeah, okay. Manchester. Uh, so you, you met was, in Manchester? He was the promoter was on, for that game. Yeah, I was on Facebook and up, uh, I get this thing, who's in Bangkok? Well, I was in Bangkok. He said, I'm playing at the Sheraton. I went, wow. So I went down to the Sheraton and the next minute we're going out every day for creative <laughs> sessions. Right. It was Cafe on Thong Law, Lily and Eric. And we're coming up with these ideas. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. So, and, and that's well, obviously, yeah. so you've been well, friends ever since. And that's yeah. that's why you're you're here on holiday. You're, you're staying with Will, presumably? Yes. Yeah? On the sofa in his, in his uh, <laughs> palatial lounge. Well, he's also the drummer for the Eason Project. And uh, right. okay. I manage his business, you know, with his gigs and contracts and stuff. Fantastic. Yes, he so He looks after me very well. There could be opportunities for you both to do something in Thailand in due course. We are looking at that, definitely. Fantastic. And and you, you uh, Liliana, you, you just played a, a little part of a song that you wrote at <laughs> dinner last night. <laughs> on Monday night when we were writing. On, on Monday night, which is just incredible uh, how, how the... the Creative uh, process flows through through professional musicians. Listen, we, we're going to have to we're going to have to kind of wrap it up there. But thank you both very much indeed for joining us today, thank uh, you and minutes. Will as well. Thank you for bringing them down. Um, so for the moment, Eric and Liliana, thank you both very much indeed. I wish you the very best with your future endeavours, and I hope to see you back in Thailand again soon. Yes, you, you will. Know. Thank yes. you very Surf much Radio. indeed. Cheers.